Hi there, welcome back to part two of The Rising Sun. And we last uh, stopped when we were talking about purity and why it's important because the moon is at apogee and the moon is a reflection of the sun and what it speaks is a message to the ecclesia, the bride, the church of the risen King Christ. So I'm going to jump into uh, the prose that came out because it has to do with purity and cleansing, something that he's inviting us to by choice agree with. So let me read that again. So just a part of that prose. The stars join to remind your family what's in focus, what's first. Be about my priorities, Father speaks. You're important to me. Do you know what's important to me? The Messiah is coming. Do you reflect him, his victory? Are you ready? 9:23:17 said no different. This full circle, a loving nudge. Are you ready to launch clear, unlike Snow White, new, redeemed? 1, 2, 3 in Matthew. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. You know what? I find it interesting that he said, you're important to me. Do you know what's important to me? So he's basically saying, do you get that you are the most important thing in all creation to me? Do you know what's important to me? And God says, it's you. It's you. It's you and me. I think that is so sweet. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so getting back to the message, I find it so interesting that in this time, the Ecclesia of Father God, represented by the moon, is at its full light, pure and bright, when it's furthest away from the earth. Proximity, positioning, understanding who you are and your calling from His divine order is everything right now and from now on forward especially. I really wasn't getting why he mentioned not Snow White. I was like, not like Snow White. I didn't get it until I looked at the origins of that tale, of that story. It's like, oh, there are things in that story that are very dark. Things like dark forces of control, jealousy, death curses, and even unseen but felt manipulation some call witchcraft. Hmm, interesting. That's what a lot of this is going to sound like to you, or some of you, thinking it's astrology, but no, God's saying the stars are mine, and there's a science to it that you must understand the language of to understand times and seasons, because my message hasn't changed according to Father God. See. Even in the witchcraft thing, there is something to that. But I recommend that you take whatever your leading is about 22424 and the moon phase and it's speaking to the church to your safety in your world of your council because we are to have those we turn to that are more seasoned in the spirit and in the truth of the word of God than we are so we have safety in a multitude of council. So do that. I think that's great. Build community that way. In this time, there is an invitation to cleaning and purging, letting things go so you could be released into the fullness of reflecting purely what His vision, what His image is. And unless we do that, we're always going to fall short and be dissatisfied. Also, when He brought up not unlike Snow White, yeah, not like Snow White rather, and draw the contrast of the darkness versus the light, but we are to be like snow, and this is what the Word of God says about it. Isaiah 1.18 Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And Daniel 7, 9 says, As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. Whew, it's exciting to me. <laughs> so. Anyway, so four days of 23, 24, 25, 26, you should really look up the biblical understanding of those numbers because to me it tells a story and maybe I'll get into it if there's still time at the end of this. <laughs> but that window, that four day window is, is pretty invaluable because it's calling you, because um, the number four is about the door, what you're invited to enter into and for you to be aware of what that is as you enter in by your own choice. Ignorance is not bliss, you have to be fully aware aware of what you're stepping into. So come away with me, he invites you. Go through the door of your divine designation and be delivered from what was before and find the fullest light and joy basking in the sun. The sun, that's a play on words there, which this can be considered by Father God and what he's saying is central to him 
to determine when to send the sun forth for the children of pure light. See, the sun in our solar system, in a book of Psalms 19, it talks about how the sun is like the bridegroom coming out of the bedchamber. But it's God who only God who can release the sun in his Father God's perfect timing. So the sun flaring like it is right now, it just tells me that he's, he's getting on fire because the time is coming, the time is near, and everything is reflecting that, the, the weather patterns or the lack of pattern. And there's a lot of uh, chaos happening everywhere because the sun is in a cycle of 11, which we're in right now. That isn't the direction I'm to go with this, so let me pause there and just say, that it has a lot to do with what the king planet Jupiter is talking about and you can look back on Jupiter rings from a former release because that's important because king planet Jupiter is speaking a lot about what's happening with with Jesus Christ the king and right now king planet has entered into Taurus and he is like the bull charging for his children ready to bring not only retribution for those not in allegiance to Father God but also blessing and, and answers and uh, redemption for those who are aligned with the kingdom of light purely and surely. So there is a message in the heavens that is ringing from every dimension because the language of the stars and the celestials never stops talking. It's a language that is in every, for every land, for all people. It's only for those who will actually take time to listen but they have never stopped speaking that is what's so reassuring because the message has been and will always be the same the messiah the messiah the messiah he is coming and this time he is coming again all this talk and mention of words that are often used in horoscopes i have to address and reiterate because it's necessary this is not astrology this is astronomy science verifies father god the supreme creator of all things this is about what is called the Maseroth, or the 12 constellations mentioned in Job 38, 32. It speaks in original designation by God of what these heavenlies are to do, their true function. But his messages and meanings have been taken and twisted by spiritualists not aligned in authority or loyalty to the Holy Spirit, and that is the key difference you must know. For now, let's leave it at this for the rising sun. But know that the moon right now on 224-24 up until 226 is carrying a very clear message from Father God to his Ecclesia. Father God, who is the sustainer of all life, the creator of all life, he is calling us to remember that the sun, his sun, the bridegroom, it's likened to the solar sun and he is ready to charge, he's ready to emerge when Father God releases him and it is not too late, it will be soon. The message here is, wake and bride, it is time. Be given fully, given to Father God's design and your identity he created. Be ready for the sun and reflect fully without disturbance the light of his glory. Be cleansed, release what is not of him and shine bright in full reflection. Dig more on the words of this prose on 2.24.24 because it is layered with meaning and mysteries that he will speak directly to you what is for you at this time and season for what is to come. So I want to say there's so much here and there's so much more. So thank you for listening to part two of The Rising Sun. I will process more of what the heavens are speaking on this and share more with you as time allows and thank you again. I'm Jane Justice Park. God bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you and that you would reflect him so brilliantly and valiantly for it is a choice of bravery in this time. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.